So I'm going to dive right in. The five avoidable mistakes um, that we will not let you make <laughs> under our watch. Number one is uh, marketing to everyone or, you know, being there for everyone, not selecting a lane, not selecting a niche, not having a signature service in place. And this is so fundamental and it is so important for your, not only your business growth, but also for your sanity and for your personal growth. That's why I've made this the number one mistake that I see time and time and time and time again that needs to be stopped and you need to stop it right now because this is probably why you are not reaching the sales goals um, and to the levels that you need to be at. And so the first mistake, like I said, is uh, being everything to everyone, being the one designer that's the solution for your entire city, entire market. Um, you know, not having a niche, not having a signature service will make you will make you batty, if not completely burnt out. And I was guilty of this. This is exactly what happened inside my agency when we grew so quickly. And yeah, I talk about, I'm really proud of the fact that we had 10 staff, but there was no, uh, there was a time when we were just growing and we were saying yes to every single client that came our way. And it was like an, uh, an endless loop. I was in. I would get a client and then I would hire somebody to help work with that client. And then, you know, that person would get busy. We would get another client coming in. Then I would hire more staff. And we had projects on website design. We had projects on content. We had projects uh, and clients on, you know, in-store signage, like you name it. We were doing marketing for every single type of client possible because we were in this growth mode and I had to bring in clients to feed the, you know, to pay for the payroll. So it was this endless loop that we were constantly in. And that is just the perfect recipe for burnout. So when you're marketing your design business to everyone, whether it's, you know, when you don't segment out by demographics or by, by type of service or level of design that you want to be providing, you are really going down the road to disaster. And it is completely avoidable if you can focus in with a signature service. So that's, that's the first mistake. And it's like literally the deadliest mistake for yourself and your business. That's how severe this is. I don't mean to make it into like, whew, you know, it really is that severe when I see designers who are not able to hone in on their, on their zone of genius, on their specialty whether it's a, a type of a client, whether it's type of a project, whether it's your purpose, you've got to have a signature service so that you can quickly become an expert or a specialist in that area. That is fundamental. And we spend three weeks of our 10 week program talking about nothing else but signature service. It is that critical. And so I really want you to pay attention to this first mistake that I've seen so many times. And here's the, the thing that really is painful for me um, because I see it from this like top view and I can like, I can predict where this is going to lead most of the people that I'm speaking with. This is coming from, you know, scarcity. It's coming from a fear of missing out. It's coming from you know, feeling like you have, you're not enough and that you have to keep adding more and more and more to your plate. And when you are operating from those, um, from, from those vibrations, you're really, um, are on a path to burnout. 
So you've got to start thinking, what, what is my specialty? What is my zone of genius? What do I excel at? What is my purpose that I can bring in to the design that I do to the clients that I service? and really create a signature service around it, become known for that one thing. And that will bring you joy, that will bring you purpose, that will bring you the wealth, it'll bring you the clients, it will bring you that, you know, that expertise that people are looking to hire. People aren't looking for a specialist, they're looking for an expert, right? So mistake number one is marketing to everyone not having a market in mind and just kind of like being everything to everyone the second mistake that we're seeing and it's completely well it's avoidable but you have to really pay attention to this one is constantly working in your business now i know the challenge we all have where we, you know, I'm not a designer, but I'm a marketer and it's very easy for me to start marketing for my clients, but working in your business constantly, uh, delivering services, constantly, you know, doing all the everything in your business and not thinking about growth, not thinking about marketing, not thinking about what's gonna happen when this client project wraps up. Where am I gonna go from here? And not having a plan in place that brings you new clients, that brings you new leads, that brings you more discovery calls is, is a huge second mistake that people are making in their business. So you've gotta know how many, you know, how much time are you spending working inside of your business, you know, looking up design ideas, um, sourcing materials, uh, making revisions to the design, um, following up with the clients, and just being in, a, in that, you know, running around from uh, client to client doing consultations. All of that takes time, and that is how we make money, I get that. But there's so much of that that can be outsourced. And there's so much of that that should be outsourced so that you can now have time to work on your business. You've got to be thinking like a CEO of your business. That's why you started a business. If you just want to have your uh, nine to five or nine to nine completely booked up, working just on inside of your business, delivering design services, you're not going to have any time, any energy left on the growth side of your business, where you'll finally be able to like free yourself from, from your business. So let me ask you this. When was the last time you actually took time off on a vacation and completely shut off because the business was being taken care of? And if the answer was like, never, then that's a telltale sign that you need to start thinking about working on your business, putting in systems, putting in practices in place so that you're not the cog that's making the whole thing run. You are a business owner first. You're an entrepreneur. So you've got to think of your business as a separate entity that's running with proper systems and processes in place. And marketing is a critical part of that. So if you're not spending enough time thinking, planning, implementing marketing stuff, then, then you're just, like I said, you're, you're your only employee. You're basically uh, what they call a self-employed business. It's not a, a business business, right? So that's, if that's what you want, you just want to replace your income, then that's what you're going to get. What we recommend inside Fully Book Designer is that our, our clients who are inside the program dedicate minimum one hour a day on their marketing, whether it's to implement the modules that we've given them or it's to go beyond because we've got 
a lot of other options in terms of outreach, in terms of growth, in terms of referrals. And we have a lot of different activities that business owners should be taking on every single day. So an hour a day minimum should be spent on, uh, on your work. Now you can spend that hour first thing in the day, uh, wake up a little bit early or last thing of your day after the kids have gone to bed and then you can just kind of do your marketing stuff. Or this is what I did. When my kids were still a bit younger, I used to sometimes do weekend homework with them. So they would be sitting in the dining room doing their homework and I would be sitting there with my laptop and we would just do our, our homework my business growth work for four or five hours on a weekend. So that's how I was able to just market the marketing that I do, right? Because that's my, that's my business. And you need to have a, um, you need to have to make that a priority in your business so that you are actually working on your business and marketing that design business so that you have a constant flow of leads coming in. You have a constant flow of uh, discovery calls being booked. So let me know if this is making sense. Let me know if you have any questions. So far, we've talked about two mistakes that we see designers make all the time. One is marketing to everyone, uh, not having a signature service in place, and the second is working too much inside of their business and basically trading dollars for hours. You need to start thinking like a CEO. You need to remove yourself from the business enough so that you're thinking strategically. The third mistake, the third mistake is letting opportunities slip away. And there's a few reasons why that happens. One is you're a perfectionist. Let's just call it that, right? So in your desire to have everything perfect and everything buttoned down, you're letting opportunities slip away. Sometimes, most of the times, you need to just show up with your marketing as incomplete as it may be. Not talking about sloppy, but not expecting perfection maximus in everything you're doing. Just have to show up. You have to trust yourself that this is fine. This is ready to be shipped. This is ready to be sent out there. And just be posting. Just be connecting with people. Just be sending out, you know, reach out messages. Or, you know, having a system where you are reconnecting with old clients. So just being in that motion, letting go of perfection so that you are out there shining your beautiful light in the world and so people don't forget about you and so you're not letting go of opportunities. So that's one reason why we see you know, opportunities being slipped away because designers are too much in the zone of perfection. And the other is not having a follow through system. I mean, that's just, you know, you sent out a message to someone maybe last week and before you know it, a whole week passes by and you haven't done a follow through. You haven't done any kind of, a, Hey, just checking in. What did you think about this? What did you think about my proposal? There was a, a stat that I posted inside this group that, that, most um, the big deals are signed after eight or 10 follow-ups. That's a staggering number, right? Eight or 10. I'll be honest, it takes a lot of gut, guts, and it takes a lot of fortitude to be able to do the follow-through, but you don't have to do it manually. We show you how to do it on automation. You can set up your email sequence in a way that your, your follow through is happening on automation. You don't have to do this manually. So, but you've got to follow through. You've got to have a follow up sequence. You've got to keep those people who reached out to you, who showed even an iota of interest in your business. You've got to show that you're willing 
to entertain a conversation, answer their questions, and you're there for them. Because if you're not going to do that in the, you know, up front, what assurance do they have that you're going to be there for them when they hire you? So you've got to really show up and be prepared to have this back and forth conversation with them. Because if you take pride in your work, that's what's required of you. So you could be letting go of opportunities right now because A, you're waiting for everything to just pan out perfectly. You're waiting for that website to be perfectly ready. You're waiting for your business cards to be ready. You're waiting for your, you know, Facebook ads to be ready. Um, what else are people waiting to be ready? We have people who often wait for till they finish like five modules with, before they book a call with me to go over their marketing because they're waiting for all of this information to be presented to them so then they can make that, you know, that business plan meeting with me. They're waiting for perfection. And they will get a nudge from either me or my coach, Lisa, saying, we're ready for you and you should feel ready too. It's okay to book the call because we will go through your challenges. We will go through your hiccups. We will go through your, your, um, your goals so that we can create a plan that's right for you. So we don't wait for perfection maximus to appear and, you know, the the heavens to open up and the cherubs to be singing, we, we are constantly taking imperfect action, hoping that this is what is required of us for us to reach to our, reach our goals. Okay. So that's the third mistake that I see. And it's, it's very common for designers, creative folks to go through because we deal with things that are, pretty and we get judged on how perfect those are. So we put that extra pressure on ourselves that we have to be perfect in order for us to stand out, in order for us to claim our space, to plant our flag. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time. Your website doesn't have to have every single component in it. You need a basic website. You don't need to have like a perfect website with every single piece and every single page laid out properly. You know, get out there and start talking about, start bringing people to book calls with you. So huge, huge mistake. If you're waiting for perfection to, to happen, so you're letting opportunities slip away. And the other reason why people are letting opportunities slip away is you know, just waiting for all the, the ducks to line up or not having a follow-up sequence before they, they do that. So let me jump into the fourth mistake that we see people making time and time again. And you need to stop right now. And that is think, not being, not being, how should I say it? Not being resourceful. Let's just call it that. So life has a way of presenting challenges to us just as it has ways of presenting opportunities for us, right? And what happens is, I mean, we've all experienced 2020. We all experienced it in some format. And it was, that was, that was unexplicably challenging for many people. But the thing is, you're making a huge mistake by letting those challenges define you and letting those challenges stop you in your track, letting those challenges be the reason why you didn't reach your goals. And so being resourceful is like say, looking at the 99 things that are going wrong and then looking for that one thing that is going right. And focusing on that one thing that's going right and going after that and making that the reason to wake up, making that the reason for growth, making that the reason for you to say gratitude and to say thank you 
for for you know for letting me have this day and letting me enjoy this one thing that went right right so that is what resourceful is like constantly looking for the silver lining i'll tell you something this is very very personal but in the beginning of the pandemic in at the end of march i was having i had two life-changing conversations in one day i had a conversation with a an influencer in the industry who was just going on and on and on and on and on about how everything is shut down design industry is melting no one is going to be hiring designers this is doomsday and i'm like you know you gotta look for the silver lining she's like there is no silver lining in this and i was like okay and you know that same day a couple of hours later i had another conversation with another uh, highly respected influencer in the industry very different approach they were looking their whole organization was looking for the silver lining in this pandemic this is early days we're talking march when we didn't have anything we didn't know we didn't have that knowledge that we do today about the pandemic right and they were the complete opposite of the conversation that i had this morning they were looking for the the opportunities they were looking for the silver linings they were looking for a way to support the design community and that influencer many of you can guess was my conversation with jf fabrics which led to an incredible incredible live stream we did and an amazing year for their their clients as well as a lot of new clients we met through that program through that live stream my point in telling you this story probably for the 10th time is there that's what resourcefulness is when things are not working out you're looking for the opportunity and you're you're going for that rather than burying your head in the sand waiting for the pandemic pandemic to be over you know just kind of going with everyone to say oh wow 2020 can't wait for it to be over and you know blaming the administration blaming the government for not enough resources and and loans and credits and blaming the the suppliers for not sending um, the things you ordered those are all not going to serve you we know that like we're in 2021 right now and nothing major has changed has it except for like now we you know the united states has a new president but aside from that, the pandemic that started in March still is there. And we're still trying to figure this out. So nothing magical happened on January 1st, per se. We are still, you know, the captains of our own ship. We still have to figure out which way we need to turn our sails so that we can keep sailing into the sunset. If you don't have a plan, if you're gonna get stuck in scarcity, if you're gonna keep looking for the, the black clouds and then the rain is gonna pour on you, you've got to get resourceful. You've got to look for opportunities for that 1% chance of success and go for it rather than dwell on, on the 99%. Which brings me to the fifth mistake that we see happening all too often and that is going at it alone if we've learned anything from 2020 and as we enter into 2021 things are messy and things are not um well laid out things are you know changing on a dime we don't know what's working what's not working when we're working by ourselves we don't know which strategy to go for. We don't know which button to press. We don't know who to ask when we have questions. We don't know what other designers are doing in terms of charging for, you know, for their design fees or if they're getting any clients. We don't know when you're when we're stuck inside our, you know, 12 by 12 room and working on our computer. Uh, or maybe we're just scrolling through um, Instagram. 
like attracts like. If you are going to be stuck and you're going to be looking for evidence that no one else is charging these kind of rates, no one else is doing well, no one else is getting clients, guess what? You're going to get more of those. So there is a lot of uncertainty and there are probably a million different ways for you to grow your business, for you to work with your ideal clients, for you to charge premium rates, but you can make it much easier for yourself. You can make it a shortcut for yourself if you don't go it alone. And I've talked about having an accountability partner. I've talked about masterminds. At the end of the day, you've got to be very careful on who you're going along with, right? You've got to work with people who've done this before, who've helped other people achieve success so that they can help you move along. No matter what stage of business you're in, chances are we've worked with someone who is exactly like that and we've helped them achieve some amazing results. Or if nothing else, we've helped them come through the, the year of 2020 pandemic with their heads still attached on their shoulders. So don't do this alone. There are so many ways that things can go wrong in terms of your marketing, in terms of your business growth, in terms of what you should be charging, how you should be creating and crafting your signature service, what you should be putting on your, on your website, what you should be posting on social media, and on and on and on, what you should be doing in terms of follow-up and how you should be reaching out to partners so you can collaborate with them. There's an endless list of ideas and resources out there that you could be Googling all day long, but if you want a shortcut, if you want a faster path to making 10K a month and then quickly making $20,000 a month, we have perfected it. We're really good at it, actually. We've not just, you know, perfected that it, but we've got a lot and a lot, a lot of success stories to share with you. So reach out to, to us. We've got a team now. Or type in 10K and we will reach out to you. Let's make it really easy for you. Just type in 10K and either myself or Mary from my team is going to reach out and let you know how we can help you navigate these times and help you grow your business to a minimum 10K a month so that you can have a profitable six-figure design business without guessing, uh, without you know spending money unnecessarily on Facebook ads, without spending money on, on a huge website and waiting for perfection and waiting for opportunities for you to come by. You've got to make that happen and we can help you make that happen. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Again, um, if you want to know more about Fully Booked Designer Program or how we help our clients, what type of results you should expect, you should expect from the program. Happy to have a chat with you. Type in 10K and we will reach out. Um, I'm going to just refresh my screen to see if there are any comments or questions. Hey, Dana! Dana, did you see my email about today's workshop? We're having a, a workshop in about three hours, two and a half hours. Should be in your inbox. Uh, hey, Christine, so happy to see you here. I hope you're doing really well um, based off of our last conversation. So I don't see any questions in here. Happy to see Jumana and Dana and Christine saying hi to all of you. If you want to know more about Fully Booked Designer Program, type in 10K. We will reach out to you. Just to do a quick recap about the five mistakes that we see people making, and I really, really want to help you avoid those this year. Number one, being everything to everyone. You're not McDonald's. You're not the Cheesecake Factory. You're a a designer with valuable design to share with your ideal clients. So please don't market yourself as, you know, I want to I want to work with as many people from every walk of life possible. 
have a signature service in place. Second mistake, constantly working inside your business, delivering design services and not having any time or plan or a process in place to work on your business. You've got to dedicate minimum five hours, if not 10 a week to be growing your business. If you're working 60 hours a week, you need to be dedicating minimum five to 10 hours a week on your business, working on your marketing. Number three is letting opportunities slip away, either by being too focused on perfection or just not having a system to follow up and following through, right? And if you're letting opportunities slip away by not following up, you're letting those clients know that you're sloppy and this is what they can expect from you if they hired you, so they're gonna walk away. Number four is not being resourceful. Just looking at the problems and not thinking about you know getting resourceful, looking for the solution and looking for people or processes that will help you accelerate even faster. That's a, that's a quick way of dissolving your business by just focusing on what's not working, being stuck in old ways and not looking for new possibilities. So that's a big problem that we see designers uh, making. And number five really is being Rambo, right? Like going at it alone. I can do it. I should be able to figure this out. How hard can it be? It's social media. Like my daughter has so many followers, so why can't I figure out social media? Or my nephew knows how to design a website, so how hard can it be? But what are you gonna put in that website? What are you gonna post on that social media? You know, you and just not thinking tactically, but also from energetically, working alone is it's gonna slow you down. You're gonna have questions along the way. Who do you ask? So don't get stuck doing everything on your own. There are no prizes, no awards for growing your business by yourself. All of these self-made people had a team behind them that helped them become self-made. So take advice from people who've done this before and who have helped many others. Don't do this alone. And if you need help, if you're ready to grow, scale your business to a profitable six-figure business, want to make $10,000 a month minimum on your design fees, reach out, type in 10K or send me a private message if you don't feel comfortable and we'll have a quick chat to see if we can help you and if Fully Booked Designer is the right fit for you. All right, have a great afternoon, everyone. We'll talk to you later.